Although most suspension forks work really well in a whole variety of conditions, it's important to look after your fork. Today we're going to do the fork lower leg service. Now we're using a RockShox Pike here. It's a pretty common fork, a lot of people run this, but the principle is the same for all forks. It's only the oil variety and the volume that changes. RockShox recommends you do this service approximately every 50 hours of riding, and that's pretty much the same for most manufacturers. So the tools you need to do this are the shock pump, 2.5 mil Allen key or hex wrench, five millimeter Allen key or hex wrench, a mallet, a fine pick, some new foam rings, some seals, fork oil, syringe, fork grease, a torque wrench, isopropyl alcohol, clean rag, some gloves, and an oil pan. So before you get started with your fork lower leg service, time for a few preparation things just to make the job easier. To start with, you want to get your bike into a work stand, or if you're comfortable, remove your fork from the bike. This does make things a little bit easier to work on the fork, but it's not essential. Secondly, you want to remove the air from your fork, but just before you do that, take note of the air pressure that's in there. It just makes it a bit quicker to get back on the trails at the end. Also, take note of your rebound setting for the same reason. Okay, so step one is to just make sure you've released all of the air from the fork. Um, I was pretty sure I got most of it out when I put the shock pump to it, but you can just deflate the valve manually using the end of an Allen key. So that's all good. Next step is to remove the rebound adjuster knob from the base of the fork. Take your two and a half mil Allen key and then just undo the little pinch bolt on the rebound adjuster. Take note to not remove it fully because it's easy to lose. And then just remove the whole adjuster and then put it somewhere safe for when you put the fork back together again. So the next part of the process is to remove the fork lowers. Okay, so before you do this, make sure you place your oil pan on the floor. This will catch any oil that drains out. You'll need a five millimeter Allen key and you wanna loosen the bolts on the bottom of the fork. You don't wanna remove them completely because you may need to shock them in order to release them. Okay, so I'm just gonna start undoing the one on the damping leg here. Okay, and I can feel resistance on that, so that will need shocking. Now the same with the air leg. Now I've undone both these bolts and they're not removed from the fork yet. This is a bit where I need to shock the internals loose. So basically you've got the upper legs of the fork that slide into the lower legs. On the inside, you've got rods that are attached to the upper legs. Now these rods sit into the base of the fork. Obviously during compression and use, they do manage to stick to the bottom. So I'm just gonna free them by tapping the end of the Allen key with a mallet so it won't damage anything and then you'll find you start seeing some oil dripping out. Okay, with the two lower bolts removed, it's time to slide the lower legs off the fork. Um, if there will be some resistance to this, don't be tempted to tap your fork arch because you can crack those. If it's still not sliding off well, put the bolts back in a few turns and give them another tap just to make sure everything's freed, then you can start removing the lower. Okay, so your next step is to remove the foam rings. These sit underneath the wiper seals. So get the pick and very carefully just prise these out without damaging the seals or anything else. There we go. So as you can see, we've removed the foam rings from the fork. Their job is to lubricate the wiper seals. These particular ones have only been in this fork for about a month. So I'm actually gonna reuse these because they're not damaged. What you wanna do is soak them in isopropyl alcohol, fully clean them. Then you can re-soak them in the oil and replace them into the fork. Now, some people like to actually soak them like in a tub of oil, but it's a little bit wasteful if you haven't got much oil. So what I'm gonna do is actually inject the oil afterwards using a syringe. Now, if you do need to replace them, it is worth keeping some foam seals at home. They don't cost a lot, and any decent bike shop will be able to help you out with some of these. Isopropyl alcohol is the best thing you can use for cleaning your foam rings. Just give them a good soaking with the stuff and then just pat them dry and you'll find that most of the oil comes out and they start looking a bit more like the new ones we just showed you. Next step is to actually give the fork lowers themselves a good clean as well. Isopropyl alcohol is good because it gets rid of oil residue on the fork. And then you want to inspect your seals. Now with a 50 hour service, you don't normally need to replace your fork seals, but if they are damaged, it's worth replacing them. Again, they don't cost too much and it does save the life of the fork in the long term. If you do need to replace your fork seals if they're damaged, you want to just prise them out gently using a ring spanner from your fork. In this case, the seals are in here because they're fairly new. You can actually see they're just pristine condition. What you're looking for are nicks and any damage on this outer surface here 
that's going to allow the fork to dry out on the inside. That's what you don't want because when the seals are dry, that's going to in turn rub the actual stanchion of your fork and you start losing the anodizing and that's expensive. So what you're doing here is just cleaning the upper legs of the fork and I'm actually going to inspect these for damage as well. Now it's pretty unlikely that these are going to have any damage because they're not that old but the likely sort of thing you might spot on your forks at home are little scratches. Now whilst you can't repair scratches what you don't want them to have is a little burr of the scratch because that burr will damage your seals and in turn that can later damage your upper legs further. So if you do have any scratches on your fork that have got a burr, just feel them to see if they feel sharp or if they've got any raised sort of profile to them. If so, take a super fine emery paper and some metal polish and just buff them out enough. You'll find you can happily keep using your forks for a long time. If they're worse than that, then you may want to get some advice from your dealer because it might be a case of having to get a new crown steerer unit and that is pretty expensive. So now it's time to replace the foam rings into the fork. As I mentioned, I have not soaked these in oil. I'm actually gonna apply the oil once it's in the fork using a syringe. So after you've oiled the foam rings, what you wanna do is just wipe some decent quality suspension grease just around the inside of your wiper seals. That just helps complete the lower leg surface before you put the fork back together. So now it's a case of sliding your lower legs back onto the uppers. One thing to take particular care of is make sure you don't fold the seals or damage them as they just get onto the edge of the tubing here. So just take a bit of care in doing this and make sure they line up correctly. You find you need to give it a little whittle before they, they give and they go on. Make sure they're okay and you slide them on. Final part of this process is fully reinstalling the lower legs. So you want to slide these on until they contact on the inner damping rods and air rods then pull them back about a centimetre this gives you enough space to inject some lower leg lube. So this lube is vital to how well the fork performs and how long it lasts until your next service. So not only does it stop the seals from drying out, but it's really, really important for initial sensitivity and small bump performance. On this particular fork, on the RockShox Pike, it actually tells you how much oil you need to put inside. Now, you don't want to put too much oil because this can actually damage the fork. So make sure you check for your particular fork here model and even your fork. So the Fox 34, for example, is going to have a different amount of oil to the RockShox. So you can get those charts online on the respective manufacturer's sites. So using a syringe is the best way to apply the oil. Not only can you get an accurate reading on how much you're putting into the fork, but it's very easy just to squirt the correct amount in and you're not wasting any. It's quite expensive stuff. So with your lower legs lubricated now, you want to replace the bolts at the bottom of the fork. Slide the lower back on until those rods connect fully. That means your threads are lined up at the bottom here and replace the bolts. Now you do want to make sure you obey torque settings on these because it's a delicate part of the bike and you don't want to strip any expensive parts out. Now it's just a case of reversing the process from the beginning of this. So get your rebound knob and put this back into the fork. Make sure that it's nice and secure on there. Don't over tighten that. Then dial in the correct amount of rebound that you noted down to start with and then replace the air into the top of the fork before giving the whole lot a good wipe down with isopropyl alcohol. So that's the end of the process. It's just simply time to reinstall this to your bike and go and hit the trails. If you want to find out how to do the same process for a pair of Fox forks, click down here. If you want to learn more about fork and shock sag, click over here. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking the globe. Get brand new video every day and give us a thumbs up if you like the video.